When the terms of an arithmetic sequence are added, then the resulting sum is known as an arithmetic series. We can prove that Sn, the sum of n terms, can be calculated using the following formula. Sn is equal to half n into a plus l, where is the last term of the sequence? The proof is as follows. Write a general arithmetic series by firstly starting from the first term a to the last term l, then rewrite the series by reversing the terms. Add the terms in the two individual series together, term by term, and divide the result by 2. The last term, L, is equivalent to Tn, which is equal to A plus the result of n minus 1 multiplied by D. Then we can rewrite Sn as Sn is equal to half n into 2A plus the result of n minus 1 multiplied by D. Both of these formulae for Sn can be used to evaluate the sum of an arithmetic series, although you may prefer to use one rather than the other, depending on what information is given in your question. Example 1. Determine the sum of an arithmetic series. Find the sum of the first 20 terms of the arithmetic series negative 16 plus negative 12 plus negative 8, and so on. Solution. A equals negative 16. D equals negative 12 minus negative 16, which equals 4, and N equals 20. We use the formula Sn is equal to half n into 2a plus the result of n minus 1 multiplied by d, as we have not been given the last term of the sequence. Substitute the values for a, d, and n. The sum of 20 terms is equal to half of 20 into two lots of negative 16 plus the result of 20 minus 1 multiplied by 4, which is equal to 10 times 44. Therefore, the sum of 20 terms is equal to 440. Example 2. Determine the value of n for an arithmetic series. Determine the value of n if the sum of all terms from p equal to 1 to p equal to n of 6p minus 14 is equal to 1,600. Solution. From the given information, we are told that the sum of n terms of the sequence 6p minus 14 is equal to 1,600. We must first expand the series to work out the first three terms. For p equal to 1, 6 times 1 minus 14 equals negative 8. For p equal to 2, 6 times 2 minus 14 equals negative 2. For p equal to 3, 6 times 3 minus 14 equals 4. The series is negative 8 plus negative 2 plus 4, and so on. Next we check for d, the common difference. d equals term 3 minus term 2, which equals term 2 minus term 1. Term 3 minus term 2 is equal to 4 minus negative 2, which equals 6. And term 2 minus term 1 is equal to negative 2 minus negative 8, which equals 6. Therefore, d equals 6. Using the formula for the sum of an arithmetic series and substituting values for a and d and sn, we can calculate n. sn equals to half n into 2 times negative 8 plus the difference between n and 1 multiplied by 6 is equal to 1,600. Half n into negative 16 plus 6n minus 6 is equal to 1,600. Half n into 6n minus 22 is equal to 1,600. Multiply both sides by 2 to remove the fractions. 
n into 6n minus 22 is equal to 3200. 6n squared minus 22n minus 3200 is equal to 0. Divide through by the common factor of 2. Then 3n squared minus 11n minus 1600 is equal to 0. Factorize the trinomial or use the quadratic formula. Therefore, 3n plus 64 is equal to 0 or n minus 25 is equal to 0. Therefore, n is equal to 25 or n is equal to negative 64 thirds. Since n must be a positive whole number, the number of terms must be 25. Example 3. Calculating the value of a term given the sum of n terms. Sn equal to 4n squared plus 1 represents the sum of the first n terms of a particular series. Determine the value of the eighth term. Solution. If the first term of a series is t1, then s1 is equal to t1. The sum of the first two terms is equal to t1 plus t2. Therefore, t2 equals s2 minus s1. We can generalize to get tn is equal to sn minus sn minus 1. For n, an element of the set containing 2, 3, 4, and so on. Since Sn is equal to 4n squared plus 1, to find T8 from the above explanation, we know T8 is equal to S8 minus S7. Therefore, T8 is equal to, in brackets, 4 times 8 squared plus 1 minus, in brackets, 4 times 7 squared minus 1. So T8 equals 255 minus 195, which equals 60. Example 4. Application of an arithmetic series. Tandy works as a newspaper delivery agent and initially earns 15,000 rand in her first year. Thereafter, her salary increases by 1,500 rand a year. Her expenses are 13,000 during the first year, and then they increased by 900 in each subsequent year. Use a formula to determine how long it would take her to save 21,000 rand, assuming that the money saved each year is not deposited into an account, so no interest is added, and that she saves any money left over after paying her expenses. Solution we need to work out how much Tandy has available to save each year, which will help us determine the series of savings she's able to make. Income, 15,000, 16,500, 18,000, 19,500. Her income increases by 1,500 per year. Expenses, 13,000, 13,900, 14,800, 15,700. Her expenses increased by 900 rand per year. Savings, 2,000, 2,600, 3,200 rand, and 3,800 rand. Let's examine the savings series. 2,000 plus 2,600 plus 3,200 plus 3,800 a is equal to 2,000. D equals term 3 minus term 2, which equals term 2 minus term 1. Term 3 minus term 2 equals 3,200 minus 2,600, which equals 600. Term 2 minus term 1 equals 2,600 minus 2,000, which also equals 600. So D equals 600. Since we are dealing with an arithmetic series, we can use the formula and substitute the variables we have in order to solve for Sn is equal to half N into 2A 
plus the result of n minus 1 multiplied by d. That is equal to half n into 2 times 2,000 plus the result of n minus 1 multiplied by 600. 21,000 is equal to half n into 4,000 plus 600, n minus 600. 21,000 is equal to half n into 3,400 plus 600 n. 21,000 is equal to 1,700 n plus 300 n squared. 300n squared plus 1700n minus 21,000 is equal to naught. By factorizing or using the quadratic formula, n is equal to 6 or n is equal to negative 35 thirds. As n has to be a natural number, the fraction 35 over 3 is not valid. Therefore, n equal to 6 is the only valid solution. It will take Tandy 6 years to save 21,000 rand.